As we get into medical school, residency, and, um, and graduate and go into academic medicine, we often hear that we need scholarly activities, you need paper publications, and sometimes we just do things by default and not really know why we are doing this. So today I'm going to talk about the three level benefits of publishing papers and explain why publishing paper is still the main currency in academia. So at the high level, um, when you publish paper, you are moving science forward. You are providing new evidence on new ways to think about things, uh, new ways to do things, help patients, and maybe even in a new way to solve problems. When you think back about why you go into medicine in the first place, uh, many of us go into medicine to help patients. So that is one to one impact. But when you're publishing paper, you're moving science forward and now you're doing a one to many. So now you have a larger impact to the society. The next level is the institution. So why do institutions really care about paper publication and why do promotion committees look at how many papers you publish? It is because it really ties back to the prestige and the ranking of the university. Um, if you look at many of the ranking, uh, many of the university ranking, like US Best Hospital, US Best News, or even international ranking of universities, 40%, which is the majority of their ranking, is based on how many citations and how many paper publications by their faculty members. And so when you get a higher ranking and higher prestige, it means that the institution is able to recruit better students, better faculty, they, can, they also get bigger endorsement. And so how does it relate to you? It is really important to know your incentive of the institution and also understand the promotion criteria of your institution. That is why most academic institutions still require paper publication for you to go up the academic rank. And so how does that relate to you? It is important to know the incentive of your institution and understand what the promotion criteria is so that you can start preparing early on. Don't wait till year five and then realize that, oh, you need actually 10 publication and by then it will be too late. The next benefit is directly to you. That is building authority. When you study ethnology, authority comes from the word author. So when you are a published author, you are automatically seen as an authority in that field. And that is why people who publish books tend to get more speaking opportunities. People who have paper publication tend to be more likely to be invited for grand round speeches. If you're in academic medicine, in most institutions, paper publication is the main currency and you need to reach certain metrics in order to get promoted. Now, when you are in training, if you are able to publish your paper, this is a big way to show, to differentiate how you are different from the others. Most competitive fellowship or residency program want to see whether the student or the resident have published papers in the past or not. So why is that? It is because completing a research project is difficult and not everyone can pull it off. It takes many, many skills. For example, writing, persuasion, project management, collaboration, being hardworking, time management, efficiency, it shows that you're doing more than what you expected. That is why it is viewed very favorably among program directors. So if you ever feel like you're not motivated to write your paper, trace it all the way. Think about the three level benefits and how they will eventually benefit you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And now that you know why, watch this playlist to learn how to write papers. I'll see you there.